Hey guys, Clumsy here. Welcome back to a very dark, very top of the morning ETS2. We are driving once again with the Iveco Highway because crash bomb sounds are just amazing. One thing that I'm really looking forward to in this episode though, Q&A is back, question and answer portion. This part has been put off on hold for a long time because of all the updates that have been coming in. So I didn't have time to answer questions, but uh, we have some questions from Jay. And if you have questions, I'll tell more on how you can ask them in a few minutes. But for now, we are making our way from Norway in Trondheim, uh, making our way to Finland, I believe. Yeah, so from Norway to Sweden to Finland. We probably won't finish in this episode. But we'll uh, probably do a bit of trucking for around 30 minutes answering questions. Okay, so let's get to it. And we should experience very shortly a very beautiful sunrise care of JBX graphics too. For other mods that are enabled and activated in this episode, check out the video description for a bit more detail. And if you want the full detail, check out the mods list. The link is also in the video description. Where is everybody? Everybody's still sleeping. I think. What time is it anyway? 5.56 a.m. Not very far from when I am recording this. I, it is currently 6.53 a.m. Here in Singapore as I'm recording this one. What was that? Oh, that was a train. Interesting. There we go. Some people are indeed awake already. Alright. Yeah, I thought we'd drive in Norway for a change. We haven't gone to the Scandinavian areas in quite a bit. Yikes, sorry about that. I think I just cut him. Looking good. Alright. So yes, we will focus less on updates and more on Q&A and that's mainly thanks to the lull that we are encountering right now. You might have watched the previous stream where I discussed about that lull where like everybody is on pause, everybody is in is working on something, everything is in progress and nothing is getting released. So I think we are in that stage when SCS is very close to a release of either 138, um, Idaho DLC, or whatever DLC is coming up, that's probably Idaho. But 138 is around the corner, it's still in open beta though. And right now I'm not in it yet in ETS2. So this version that we are seeing right now, I'm still in 137. But there yeah, are not many updates, so it's the perfect time to get back into Q&A. And answer some questions that have been asked for a few months now it seems like even Q&A went into the pandemic lockdown slow down here it's weird brakes wouldn't trigger all right there you go so we have actually questions from Jay since March and I haven't been able to answer them because I have been super busy focusing on all the things happening in the trucking world, in the flight sim world, and everything. But now at least we get some breathing space, some breathing room, so I can start answering them now. And if you have a question you'd like me to answer or a topic you'd like me to cover in these kinds of episodes, I know some, some of you guys prefer the episodes with commentary. And the more questions, the more topics that you give out, the more commentaries I can do. Because it will be harder for me to run out of ideas on what to talk about. So that will help me a lot and that will ultimately lead to hopefully a better episode. So if you have questions or topics, feel free to ask them. I made now a Google form, high tech stuff now, <laughs> getting in with technology now so it's easier for you. So there will be a link in the video description. I also shared it in my social media channels and in Discord. So that Google Form link will let you ask a question 
and then optionally you can give out your name or if you'd prefer to stay anonymous then that's fine too so just ask your question there and if you'd like to get credited then let me know your name as well so i can attribute it properly or if you just like to be anonymous maybe you are asking a sensitive question then uh, do that and just leave the name blank that's okay as well there is no guarantee that i will answer but you can surely ask <laughs> it depends on how sensitive or how yeah, safe the question is but i'll do my best to answer them right anyway without further ado let's start first question what is the best thing about your life right now hmm, interesting um well despite the pandemic despite the changes that have been happening in the world i would say i am very fortunate in that regard with the industry i'm in i'm in it consulting so most of my job involves sitting on my desk working in front of a pc and a laptop so i have been uh, mainly so far i have not been affected by the covid uh, lockdown and stuff like that so i've been able to work from home and uh, earn a paycheck and i have been able to continue recording videos with you guys in youtube streaming on twitch so that's the best thing in my life right now that despite the series of unfortunate events so far things has, have still been moving on my end so i'm very lucky to have that and i'm very thankful for that and that might not be like uh, winning a lottery ticket or anything but i am very thankful for it and especially that i am with mrs clumsy during these days so that i am able to maintain my way of living mostly just affected by the lockdown but almost everything is working i am very thankful for it and i am trying to do my best to support other people as well oh we almost stepped over there but yeah gratitude goes a long way these days there we go sunrise is starting guys and look at the windy zigzaggy bit right there my goodness right <clears throat> so yeah gratitude is a very important thing especially nowadays it's easy to complain it's easy to see what's lacking in our lives but yeah i think the opposite is also very true we can decide to be more thankful be more uh how do you say because sometimes the things we get things we already have we lose track of them or we don't uh, appreciate them as much and it's very true oh that is beautiful waterfalls and sunrise in the distance like that amazing and sometimes it takes that thing to get taken away before we realize it's worth and before we appreciate it and i would not want that to happen before i recognize something so i try to be thankful for the little things uh, and it's it's good to dream it's good to have a goal look forward to something but i think it's also important not to look forward too much that you start ignoring what's right in front of you so it's a bit of a balance yes during these episodes it can get quite dramatic and can, it can get quite introspective a bit uh, preachy at times maybe sorry about that but this is just my brain trying to be honest and trying to be uh how do you say trying to share my inner thoughts with you guys but hope you like these kinds of videos anyway if you do let me know if you don't let me know as well just be civil about it oh my goodness i love this view just so many trees and the road network is beautiful never a dull moment when it comes to scenery when it comes to the road and when it comes to the truck and with the company i have with you guys all right next question if you had to lose one of your five senses which would you give up and why hmm. 
that's tricky. First, let's go through the five senses because I have not been keeping uh, like count of them in a long time. So, sense of sight, sense of smell, sense of taste, sense of hearing, and sense of touch, and sense of taking a photo right here. <laughs> I'll take a photo there later. It is getting a bit laggy though looks like yeah but should even out a bit i think it's all the trees getting a bit on my frames there but the visuals you can't deny them so we can live with that so if i were to lose a sense definitely not the sense of sight i think that's the most important for me i'm, I'm a very visual learner very visual person and that's i think the most i would like to keep next would be the probably the sense of hearing or touch mm. yeah that's hard but thankfully the question is if uh, which one would you give up if i had to lose one but uh, yeah uh, it's very hard to choose which ones to keep but which one to lose the least one that i probably am using uh, that's tricky probably the sense of smell because uh, all of the senses are important all of the senses for sure I would like to keep as much as everybody else but I think the sense of smell I can live without as long as it's only the smell that really goes away because usually we, like when you have a cold you, when your sense of smell goes out usually that would also come with a sense of taste right so when you can't smell anything oftentimes you also cannot uh, taste anything which makes all food bland which makes things very unappetizing oh beautiful thankfully that view is as appetizing as it looks a perfect segue right <laughs> anyway so uh, yeah probably the sense of smell as long as that's the only one but definitely if i were to keep one that would be the sense of sight I'm sure a lot of you guys can relate. Oh, I think this one is even an even better photo. Let's do that one as a screenshot later as a thumbnail. Slow down. Key to your lane. Oh crap. Thankfully there's no car on the left side. I have to be very careful. Talking does take away from my attention. So I don't uh, I'm not able to pay attention as much to the signs. The speed limit changes. <clears throat> right. Next one. What is the hardest thing physically you've ever done? Ooh. Hmm. That can be uh, different factors. Like in terms of intensity. In terms of skill required. Not sure if I can give a, uh, a satisfying answer. But maybe I can share something instead. So, some of you guys might know, but in case you don't, I am a very, hmm, what's the term for it? I lack skills in the sports department, let's put it that way. That's the mildest version I get. Or, put it bluntly, I suck at sports. <laughs> I suck very bad at sports. One sec, let's slow down here. Engine brake retarder. So, I don't need to step on the brakes as much. There you go. Textbook. Roundabout. Maneuver. Alright. So yeah, I suck at sports. I suck at hand-eye coordination. I suck pretty much almost everywhere when it comes to the physical department. This is why I work in IT. And this is why I have a YouTubing uh, side hustle and hobby. Everything that involves PCs and everything that does not involve physical work oh look at the water there the reflections beautiful yeah because i pretty much suck at those so uh, for me the hardest thing physically that i've ever done is to go on those pe classes phys physical education classes back at school because back in school you didn't have a choice you had to go through them <clears throat> and because i sucked at them 
And actually, maybe it's like a chicken and egg scenario. Maybe I sucked because I didn't like them, or maybe I sucked because I didn't practice enough, or maybe I didn't practice enough because I, I sucked. But I definitely did not have the talent. So starting point, I was at a very low level, and I didn't put enough effort to to go through those sports. And uh, yeah, I guess it has something to do with where I came from or how I was. I was a very big guy before. Um, back when I was a kid, I was a chubby kid. And I continued to be the, like, probably one of the, if not the biggest guy in my batch. And that made me very bulky, very clumsy. Uh, that's the name very unwieldy so not athletic and uh, easy to tire and uh, eventually that changed I was able to lose most of the weight now it's coming back bit by bit <laughs> but that's a different topic but yeah I think that's one of the roadblocks I had when I was a kid that's why I was not um, uh, very much into sports or maybe that's also a chicken and egg scenario. Maybe I was big because I wasn't into sports, so I didn't have much physical activity. But yeah, a couple of factors there that contribute to it. Uh, in the household, we did not have a very sports-minded orientation. My parents were not into sports either. So we were more of an intellectual family, I guess you could say. More the mental than the physical side was being developed. But yes, that was the hardest thing for me, having to join the, the PE classes, being forced to bounce balls, to dribble balls and shoot them, or play volleyball and keep make sure the, the ball was up in the air, continue uh, volleying them, you know. Um, and I was, I guess, I guess part of it was I was embarrassed to be that bad in front of my classmates that I would only do the minimum like whenever we were really required to do something then I do it and then after the class I would immediately stop and now looking back oh look at that beautiful view this is the perfect combo right just each other's company hanging out enjoying the beautiful sights and just uh, sharing sharing our insights and sharing our deepest thoughts maybe not deepest hopefully not <laughs> anyway so yeah you can imagine me a big guy or even when i lost the weight already i was still clumsy because i didn't develop them anymore and uh you know how it is when you're a kid you're, you're still embarrassed about things you're thinking always what other people think of you and as you grow older, hopefully you don't become as dependent to that. You start minding your own business and not caring what others think. But yeah, when you're a kid, that's at its highest normally. So it becomes very tricky. And uh, I, I did the absolute minimum when it comes to sports. So when we were required to play basketball, I would be in the court. But I would be the guy that no one passes the ball to. I would be like, a, how do you say, a ghost player. When it's volleyball, I would need to keep the ball up, volley it a couple of times, and depending on how long you can keep the ball in the air, that was your grade. And I would uh, do my best during the class, which was not enough. I hardly got a passing mark. But yeah, I, I would do it because I needed to, and then after the class, I would stop. I wouldn't. I don't think I ever practiced outside the class, which, looking back now, was a very poor move. I could have done that and got better and have been less embarrassed, and maybe that would have improved my overall self-confidence, and that would all cascade into my adult life. And uh, yeah, but the as they say, hindsight is always twenty twenty. When you look back, you see all the faults you've had and uh, what you should have done better. Which is all in the past, so nothing to be done there. But yes, that was definitely the hardest thing for me physically is to 
do sports, be forced to play sports when I really wasn't any good at them. Um, did I enjoy them? I guess not. I guess not because I, yeah, if I enjoy them, I for sure would have persevered more, even if I sucked. I know I remember enjoying the most when it comes to PE. Was it swimming I enjoyed? I think I enjoyed the swimming itself. We had a PE class in the first year of college where we had a swimming pool in the university so I was able to swim. So I enjoyed that. I was good at that. And I didn't... I wasn't that heavy anymore by the time that came. But then my confidence uh, already got damaged in the process. So I was very self-conscious. I still am. Very self-conscious when I am in my swimming attire. You know, because you get exposed to the people. So that kind of... Uh, how do you say? Self-consciousness. I think stuck with me and that's a very bad thing that's still something I have to work on but uh, yeah despite being self-conscious was once I got in the pool I wasn't self-conscious anymore because I would be covered <laughs> by the water and then I could enjoy and swim so that part I enjoyed but everything else I hated the volleyball the basketball the physical uh, oh yeah back in high school we had a every start of the year in high school, we would have a physical. How do you how do you call it? Like a physical check, a physical um, baselining, where you would be asked to do push-ups, to do sit-ups. You would be asked to run around the oval a couple of times, and uh, depending on how many you make, those get tallied, and you would be given a grade based on that. And so, for sure, in my earlier days, I would be very heavy. And I would really only be able to do, I mean, less than 10 setups maybe. But yeah, it was really a very poor score and that didn't help with my confidence. <clears throat> Sometime in the middle of high school, I think it was the third year, that's when I started losing the weight. And uh, that was when my scores started improving. I was able to run around the oval then, and that was really a great feeling. But yeah, those were not the best times for me. Nowadays, I try to stay away from sports as much as I can. <laughs> and uh, focus on the intellectual stuff, where I am better at. But yeah, that's the thing though. You tend to discover these things about yourself. When you're young, you explore, you try out everything, see what sticks, see what you like. And then as you grow older, you know what you like and you focus on that, you double down on that and you stay away from the things that you don't like and don't uh, appeal to you. So nowadays, I don't do any sports. I don't follow any sports. I don't play any sports. But of course, physical activity is still an essential thing to be healthy. So I still go to the gym and uh, do classes and... Uh, work out but yeah I have to be very conscious about it otherwise I would not do them at all so the way me and Mrs. Clumsy way, way we work around that is we join classes so we have this specific time we book for a specific class group classes where you have a bit of peer pressure you know you can't just cancel because you booked it already and you committed to it already so even if you get lazy you really have to go that's a very effective tool for us to continue with these classes. Otherwise, we would talk ourselves out of it and just say, ah, maybe let's do it tomorrow. And that pattern would get repeated. So, yeah, for non-physical guys like me, I would highly recommend that approach. Give yourself some accountability. Join a class, even if it costs more. Join a class, commit ask a friend to go with you or uh, yeah nowadays because of the lockdown going to the gym is not a possibility but fortunately we have zoom we have video conferencing so these online classes have come up and that's a very effective thing for us previously and i know this is getting way off topic already but i think this is how it goes the q a doesn't really go just the questions it's like a guideline right for which topic to go through so I think I will spend the rest of the episode with 
physical things in mind because I think this will be helpful for some people if you have not found your style yet and if you have a hard time sticking with your regimen like if you decided you want to lose weight and you want to exercise but you always get lazy like I do then you have to trick yourself you have to find a system that allows you or does that prevents you from making excuses that makes you commit so discipline is not an effective way to lose weight this self-discipline is can only take you so far you have to really develop a system so that you have something that is sustainable because self-discipline runs out after a while so for us that that thing that is working out is yeah with these lockdowns um we initially subscribed to uh an online streaming service for fitness like you know netflix have streaming for shows this one the less meals on demand it is it's like netflix but for fitness so we have the online classes that you can play at any time and you can join them like the recording you can go with the recording and you get to fit that way and that's good but because that is involving mostly self uh, uh, you, you get to use or you get to play it at your own time so you have more freedom to decide when you go to these classes that's when the excuse, excuses come up oh, I'm so tired today oh, it's, been an, it's been a bad day oh it's been a good day your brain will come up with all of these excuses and you will make every little bit of excuse to not go and in the beginning the self-discipline would win and no I really need to do this I'm motivated this is my resolution and then after a few times your self-discipline runs out and you eventually uh, give way and then it doesn't work anymore and uh the habit is lost so eventually we discovered that that kind of streaming service does not work for us because we are able to fool ourselves into always skipping the class and just postponing it postponing it until the entire week passes and we have not done a single class so eventually we decided huh, we have to go with something else and uh, we found uh, some instructors that are doing classes online some homemade fitness classes and we tried some of them out and there are some very professional ones and uh, very nice system very nice classes very nice tunes and we tried it and it cost a bit more i guess because you have to pay per class and it's virtual so you stay at home you join the zoom conference and then he um they play the music and then you guys go through the class together things like that foggy morning huh so it's it's cool but uh, it's a bit pricey and you have to stick to the schedule that they have so it's a bit more inflexible but it works for us because it's yeah there's that level of commitment you already paid for the class so you already spent the money you already committed to the instructor so you have like a one is to one you have you have a how do you say a direct contact to the instructor so when you cancel you have to tell them oh sorry i can't join and uh, things like that and so it's it makes it very very um how do you say there is a lot of pressure that involves with that with having to cancel straight with the instructor so those two things make it a real barrier for us for our personality type and so i think we've started this routine for the past maybe three weeks four weeks and it's been holding so far so hopefully we don't develop an excuse for it but so far this trick has been working for us so with this in mind we're able to do workouts three times a week it's a good start now we have to um we have to control our eating in that one we haven't really done yet 
we haven't really gotten around to building a system for that so uh, that is work in progress so right now i have gained a lot of kilos in the weight department i need to shed them off bit by bit but it all starts with a good system so we can follow it and not let self-discipline forge things forward because that is never a uh, sustainable thing and yeah this is something that is consistent with the recent book that I um, read this idea is something I came out that uh, I, we, we came up with our own and something that might help you as well but you have to find what works for you it doesn't work for everybody it depends on your personality it depends on the kind of excuses your mind makes but yeah, you have to develop a system and for us the this one is consistent with the the atomic habits book if you've read that if you've seen that yeah it highlights the importance of these systems and don't rely on your self-discipline rely on your systems in speaking of system I actually I realized looking back now remember I told you about me being overweight and being very big the biggest in my class back then and how and I was able to shed off my weight thinking now how I was able to do that I was actually it was a combination of motivation but only, motivation only gets you so far and systems mainly I think it's the systems that I developed on my own back then that made me made it possible for me to lose weight and you know what system that was it was very simple it didn't do any fancy workouts my parents did purchase a uh, uh, a fitness equipment for us I'm not sure if you guys were around by then but for those who lived in the 90s you might know what this is yeah time works it's like uh, imagine a stationary bike but you have to, in addition to pedaling, you have to also twist your body left and right. So it's like pedaling and twisting your body left and right. And that's like a, a stationary bike with a little bit of um, strength resistance and endurance. It's basically a workout, yeah? And you stay on the spot. So if you have a hard time imagining that, just imagine a stationary bike. That's as close as I can say and the the system i developed that made me continue to use that bike that bike that time works equipment consistently every day seven days a week or maybe six days a week now seven days a week was my because i tied it to a show i really liked back then i was really into anime and i told myself uh, and that the anime back then was naruto you might, some of you anime fans might know that but imagine a TV show you really like and make a deal with yourself that's what I did that you can only watch the TV show while you are in that machine so for me that was the Timeworks equipment and I can only watch Naruto whenever I am pedaling and when the pedaling stops the show stops as well now you have to be very careful that you don't trick yourself or you don't just give up on that rule but i was fortunate to be able to stick with that so for me you know those moments when you really like a sh tv show they end up in cliffhangers and you would want to get to the next episode that's how it is so whenever i cannot skip an episode whenever i cannot just wait for an episode till tomorrow then i would work out more and that just linked directly to my workout and my enjoyment so even though the workout itself I didn't enjoy um, I made it enjoyable by attaching it to the watching of the TV show and I'm sure that thing can be done nowadays with the help of Netflix and other streaming services you just have to buy uh, some equipment at home so you can continue working out at home so that's one thing that you can try out but yeah it's uh i think it's a it's very effective <clears throat> but we'll see we'll see anyway 
that's how it worked for me and i was able to lose oh my goodness i don't know how many what was my lowest weight before i think i was able to lose 50 pounds five zero pounds of course it's not only the workout it's also the diet the motivation the raging hormones you know if you had a crush back then you wanted to look good for your crush so that motivation really takes you very far and uh, the systems definitely help so your self-discipline doesn't uh, run out so it's a little combination of everything anyway so yeah that's the physical aspect of it so hopefully that helped you out if you're not familiar with that uh, approach then you can try it and let me know how it works out or if you do that to a certain extent let me know apparently they have an official term for it oh i I forgot what the what the term was temptation bundling or something like that they have a a psychological term for it like grouping together the thing you don't like with the thing you like so that you end up liking the thing and for me that's exercising i grouped it together with the tv show and so i end up liking the tv show where i I like the tv show and i end up doing the thing i don't like which is working out so it's a cool trick to fool your mind that's one of an example of a system all right but anyway hope that helped out and yes we will end it here we'll continue next time maybe i'll continue recording but i try to keep these episodes 30 plus minutes so it's not too long Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that bit. And if you have questions, make sure to fill out the form. Link is in the video description. Catch you guys soon. Clumsy trucking. And let me know how you like these kinds of videos. Thanks and bye-bye. Have a good one.